Welcome back to a new video about full wave rectifier circuit. In this example, we'll discuss the full wave rectifier having a RL load, so resistor and an inductor in series. We will see that step by step shortly in our calculations and also verify this in MATLAB Simulink simulations. So what we have is the following. We have again our bridge configuration of our full wave rectifier. This is the source signal, AC source. And here you see the series combination of R and L. The values of the source, the resistor and inductor are shown here and we like to calculate again the values here shown as the average load voltage, average load current, RMS load voltage, RMS load current and also the absorbed power and also the power factor finally. So before we move on again we look at the waveform for this circuit. The Vs is given as a pure sine wave again in the parameter omega t instead of t. And we see here the VO, which is our load voltage, and the IO, which is our load current. And you see that the load voltage, again, the absolute value of our load, uh, I mean the source voltage. But load current is also in the same shape, but just a little bit shifted up because of that inductor action. We will see that also that this is happening in the simulation results. Okay, let's now look at the calculations. Again, we designate our source voltage by the omega t parameter, and here is the VMR 170 volts, that's the amplitude, and the omega is 120 pi radians per second. Okay, first one is the average load voltage, that is again given by this expression, because the integration is now from 0 to pi for our VO, because the period also has decreased from 2 pi to pi, that is this general formula we have discussed also brief. Uh, previously and we now also know that VO is equal to VS because the we just substitute now everything in here also this one that will be now given in journal form like so and that results in this form formula we also have seen in the previous example where we had here a resistive load now when you do the calculation here you get now exactly the same as before so which is 108.2 volts the average load current will be again using Ohm's law in this case we have 10 ohms and that will give us 10.82 amps so just divide this by 10. That was easy now looking at the load voltage and load current in the more in detail here we can say that the full wave rectified uh, voltage at the output so for the load can be expressed using Fourier series and that has a DC term and a lot of AC terms in this case only the even harmonics now it can be given by this expression mathematically VO here is our DC or our average value of our load voltage and here the summation of all the AC terms in this case you see here 2, 4, 6 we only use the even harmonics so this part is for DC and the all other parts are for AC terms now in this case as said before VO is 2 VM over pi and the VO comma N are the amplitudes of the harmonic so that is actually what you see in front of this cosine and that is given by this expression again we leave the details out how you determine this but this is what we will use in our calculation so you need here the n which is our number of the harmonics so in, if you have n is 2 that means you have the second harmonic or the, the harmonics for let's say for the ac terms the second harmonic I also know that the omega zero here is 120 pi radians per second. Why? Because that is the fundamental frequency of our source signal. So that's also what we need to use. Okay, the load current, we can relate the load voltage by using superposition. For each frequency part, we'll use the Ohm's law to calculate the corresponding load current. So we can say the average load current is equal to the average load voltage over the resistor. That is pure resistive part. And now the harmonics, so the harmonics for the load current is also equal to the harmonics for the load voltage over the impedance. In this case, the impedance Zn is related to that resistance, resistor, and also the inductor reactance. And that is N times the omega zero times L. So this is reactance, omega times L. And this N is the harmonic. So there's a two, four, six, etc. Let's also look at the table and we actually see here a lot of information. So let's go one by one. And here is our index. So if you have NS0, that means you have a DC 
or average quantities. If you go to NS2, that means you have the NS2, the second harmonic for the AC terms. If you go to 4, that is the uh, NS4 for the AC terms, etc. You see here the frequency. So if the frequency is 0, it means you have DC terms, 120 hertz. That is 2 times the 60 hertz. So that's actually from this one because that is 60 hertz. So 120 pi radians per second will be 60 hertz. 4 times the 60 hertz and 6 times the 60 hertz. This is given in the omega n, so just 2 pi times what you see here in this column. And here you see the amplitude. We calculate that using this formula. So using this formula, we can calculate here. Actually, the columns, only this one is calculated using the calculation we have done in question A. So this is only, the first row is only DC part. Now what you see is that this will be then 72.15 if n is... So you just substitute here NS2 and also VMS 170 volts, you get actually 72.15. In a similar way for NS4 and NS6. The RMS value corresponding to this amplitudes is just divide this harmonics by square root of 2. So each harmonic is considered to be a pure sine wave. You just can uh, divide this by square root of 2, you get this one. The Z, the impedance column, is also really the straightforward. You just substitute here 10, so you get 10 squared, plus in the quantity, you get N times the 120 pi times 0.025, that's actually 25 milli hernies, and also quantity squared, and this H, the N will change here. So the N is, in this case, 2, and the next one is 4, and the next one is 6, so you can also go on to 8, etc. And then take the square root of this summation, and that will give you now 21.34. And the next one will be 39, and the next one will be 57.43. Now, the calculation of the harmonics for the load current is really straightforward, since we know the amplitude here for the load voltage harmonic and also the impedance. So you do harmonics load voltage over the impedance, you get actually the values here. So only, again, looking at the uh, NS2, NS4, NS6, because this is all DC, but this is also calculated because you know that Zn is for DC 10 ohms, because that is pure resistive, so we don't have to bother about this inductor. So then you need to do, for example, if I make one example, it will be then 72.15 over 21.34 will be then this number. Again, this is the amplitude of our load uh, current harmonics. You need to also divide this by a square root of 2 to get the RMS value. Okay. Now we have all the components for our load voltage and also load current. Then we can calculate using this data the RMS load voltage using the column here. So we have the DC quantity and also the AC terms here. So the formula for that is using this column is given by this. You have the average load voltage squared plus the quantities for the amplitudes in RMS for our harmonics, each squared. So you add them up and you actually get then the complete load voltage RMS. Of course, you need to take infinite terms for the harmonic, but I stopped actually at the NS6 because after that value of NS8, etc., this value will be really small, so the contribution is also really, really small, so I actually stopped here. In a similar form, you can go for the RMS load current, taking the column here, and again, the square root of the load voltage, a load current, I must say, DC, plus the, all the harmonics each uh, squared for our RMS, and what you have is then this 11.09, so we're taking these values here. Okay. Okay, now taking this all together, we also have the values again here. Let's now calculate the absorbed load power that can be calculated using the RMS load current times the resistor because we only look at the pure resistive part for our absorbed load power. That is an 11.09 amps for our RMS load voltage times 10 that will give us 1230 watts. The power factor, final one, is the PF that is given by the true power divided by the apparent power. So true power is our load power, absorbed load power. And apparent uh, 
power is given by the source voltage RMS times the source current RMS. And the source current RMS is load current RMS because they are in series, so that's also 11.09 amps. And the source voltage RMS is given by the amplitude of our source voltage, which is 170 divided by the square root of 2. Why? Because this is a pure sine wave, so that will give us 120.2 volts. Now, taking these two together in the product, it will give us an apparent power of 1,333 volt amperes. Now, putting that in the power factor formula, you get now here 0 0.9227. Okay, this is now, these are now the values we just calculated. Now, looking at the simulator, in the simulink, we have now our circuit drone, the full way rectifier, you see this, and also the resistor and the inductor. This is done in the simulink using Simscape elements. This AC source is RVS, and this scope here will then uh, display the current measured here, the voltage additional, which is our load voltage, and also the source voltage here. So we have here three plots. The mean block will calculate the average value, and also the RMS will be here, and it will calculate the RMS value. Let's go one by one. Our average load voltage, 108.2 volts, as we have calculated. Average load current 10.82 amps as we have calculated. RMS load voltage 120.2 volts as we have calculated. And also the RMS load current 11.09 amps as we have calculated. So everything is checked here. Let's also look at the plots. So that's actually from the scope. The red one is our VS source voltage. The green one is our load voltage. You see again this. Uh, rep the absolute value of our input, the source voltage. And, and this will be our load current. You see actually that it has a transient part and then it has now a steady state situation where you see that this is uh, almost a nice sine wave. So it's actually having a, some peak peak value and also some average value. That is also the average which we have calculated here for our load current. All right, guys, this is our example considering the full wave rectifier having an RL load. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.